Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my week 17 wrap up. And if you're thinking to yourself, didn't I just watch her week 16? Yes, but that's because I wanted to make sure my May of the Moderns TBR came out earlier in the week before May started. And then it's taken me a little while to finish editing my week 16. So yes, week 16 and week 17 will be back to back. But that's okay. Just catches you up faster that way. It has been a week. My work had an outbreak of COVID-19, which is the first time since everything happened. And as we're a health department, I think that's pretty darn good. It wasn't until all the mask mandates were lifted and our department said, okay, if you're not talking to a patient or talking to someone from the public, you can take your masks off in meetings and in your office space. And then a whole bunch of people ended up positive. I have an office to myself, not because I'm important, but because they didn't know where else to house me. You know, again, wear masks. I wear masks out in public still. So everyone had to be tested on Monday. I tested negative. And then more people started to come up with, or started to have symptoms and they retested everyone on Wednesday. Still negative. And then because today, which is Saturday, I normally film my wrap ups on Saturday, I have to go to an event for my health department. I had to be tested again on Friday. Still negative. And then on top of that, I had to do a home test. And I'm not annoyed about the testing. I'm more annoyed that I had to download an app on my phone for this test. And that wasn't conveyed when they gave it to me. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it's my personal phone. And work apps should not be on it. Work doesn't help me pay for it. So no, they should not get to have me put work apps on my phone. That is inappropriate. So I'm more annoyed about that than having to test multiple times in the week. Yeah. But that's how my week's been going work-wise, so... Book-wise, it's been great, so let's get into that. <laughs> so, last weekend I finished In the Watchful City by S. Jiaoji Lu. I totally butchered that second name. I did look up the author, and they are always referred to as S. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I was going to ask my coworker who speaks Chinese how to say the name. And, you know, with COVID, that doesn't always get to happen. Anyway, back to the story. This follows Anima, who, from the synopsis, I thought Anima was an AI. And no, Anima is human, connected to an artificial intelligence system that governs her city, Aura. And Anima notices a person walking the streets that there's no record that they entered the city. And she's confused. And then they end up coming to see her. And they are collecting stories and they want to collect a story or an object from her. And she agrees because she's curious about their box of treasures. And they tell her different stories about items in the box that she's interested in. And for the queer community, I think this would be a really good book. The basis of this world is queer because it shows various ways of self-expression. I don't think what I got from this novella was what the author was actually aiming for, but what I got from this is there are always gonna be people in every society who are not happy with how things are going. Even if the majority are, there's always gonna be people who aren't. That's actually the theme that I got from this, is not everyone is gonna be happy with what is being done. And that doesn't necessarily make it wrong or right. It's very interesting that there are things that you can tell that characters think are wrong or right, but this isn't the author saying this is wrong or right. It's just saying, based off of experience, this person doesn't agree with this and it was a very interesting way to handle it. I kind of wish that we got to see more of Aura and how it is, and not just through Anima's 
point of view. But the stories that were told weren't set in her city. They were set in other places in the world. So what she was doing in the city, you can't say she was good or evil if what's being done is bad or not, because you don't actually know. You just know a little bit of what she does and not the greater whole. So it was interesting. And I do suggest that everyone go read this. I then finished my short story collection of Reclaim the Stars. The editor is Zoreta Cordova, but the authors are all from different Latin, uh, Latino diaspora, Latinx diaspora, however you want to say it. And it has science fiction stories, it has fantasy stories, and then they have another section where it's like other world stories. And I, like, this is a very solid collection. I use Copile, and so for Goodreads purposes, it came out to a four. For Storygraph, it came out to 4.5. It is very solid. Now, there were stories I didn't like, especially didn't like when at the very end of the story, instead of wrapping up the story, they gave a twist that was supposed to make it like, open-ended. Because it didn't work. I'm just like, all you did was ask more questions at the end. You didn't actually end your story. And to me, that's more what you do in opening of a novel. So those stories were my biggest gripe. It's like, you didn't actually end your story. You could have given me a conclusion to this vignette of this moment we're seeing. Instead, you're going, no, let me, there you go. Now you get to imagine the rest of the world. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm here for the story at hand. So for the ones I didn't like, that was my issue with them. For the ones I did like, they did wrap it up, and I was happy with the story that I got. And I definitely have picked up some new authors that I want to try in other aspects. So this was really good, and I think everyone should pick it up. I also finished Root Magic by Eden Royce. This is an amazing middle grade, so if you have any older elementary students through middle school, junior high, even into high school, this would be a great book to give them. I would say that this is a historical fiction. How fantastical it is depends on whether or not you believe in root magic. If you believe in root magic, it's more historical. And if you don't, then it's more fantastical. I have no opinion either way. But I really enjoyed getting to follow Jezebel, especially as she's learning to accept herself for who she is while learning that there are rules that she still has to navigate in her society. And with her twin brother, Jay, like, what does it mean to be siblings? And as you're one's male, one's female, there's obviously going to be times that you're going to grow apart. And there's times when you need to come together. I really enjoyed it. I then finished The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. This is a reread for me after watching Bridgerton season two and in my head going, but I like the book better. I was like, well, I should go read the book. And I've heard some more discussions. One that I really enjoyed was by the Vixen of Fiction, or Vixen of Fiction. Uh, her channel, they do scripting the book, where they read a book, watch the adaptation, and then discuss it. And I really enjoyed their conversations. There were things that they liked that I didn't like with the adaptation, and vice versa. But there, still, there, were, there were things that they pointed out as problematic in the book that was not uh, adapted. And I agree that that was problematic. But not everything. Some of the things I just enjoyed. It still is a very solid read for me, and I still really enjoyed it. I then got into The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, And I'm not too far into it. I think I'm chapter 6. Or I'm ready to start chapter 6. Yeah, I'm ready to start chapter 6. But this is... A, like, I already feel immersed into this world. Which is... You know, the best way for me to read my fantasy. So I'm really enjoying it. I don't think that I can finish it by the end of today, as today's the last day of April. So my uh, magical readathon prompt will have to continue into May, but that's okay. We'll be continuing onwards with this for this next week. I also started a reread of the next Bridgerton book which I'm spacing on the name right now. So this is Benedict's story. This is kind of based off of a Cinderella plotline. 
And I think that Benedict is my favorite Bridgerton, even though Kate is my favorite heroine. So Kate is in the second book, and we have Sophie in this book, and I like her. Julia Quinn made her more sarcastic and more, like, she, she likes to poke things. I'm enjoying my reread of this one more than I thought I would because I didn't remember liking it that much. Now the Benedict in the show is not the same personality, so I'm curious to see how that adaptation will go. But that's okay. Now, for what I'm going to be picking up, I, I have my three in-person books that I've gotten from my May of the Moderns, and I think that I'm going to start with Fear by Gabriel Chevalier. I believe this is from a French perspective, and this, I think it would be interesting to read alongside this because for the colonizer country, the names are French or at least that's how they're coming off to me. All the different names just, they sound more French. And yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. So I think they'll pair well together. And yeah, yeah, that's all I can say is yes. For my writing wrap up, I didn't this week. I just kind of took it easy. I did, I spent more time daydreaming and I think that was good for me. Going into my other media, like I said, I watched the episode where they were scripting the book for Bridgerton season two, and that was a lot of fun. I also really enjoyed the the most recent Writing Excuses podcast where they were talking about writing with from public domain items, and all of a sudden, my brain, like, because they were talking about what year was they were up to for public domain, and I realized that The Secret Garden is in public domain. And immediately my mind went, the secret garden in space. So part of my daydreaming this week was, how would I adapt that story to be set in space? And it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> like I said, sometimes you just need to daydream about things before you go back to what you're writing. I recognize that this is my brain trying to go, ooh, new shiny idea. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not to that writing stage yet. I need more time to daydream about this. I also watched Space Sweepers this week, which I know has been nominated for one of the science fiction awards that I follow, and I really enjoyed it. It's a longer movie than I normally like to watch, but I realized I hadn't watched a lot of... I don't watch a lot of movies, and when I watch more TV shows because after an episode I can step away, or I can binge it depending on what my mood is, but I typically watch things with my husband when I watch anything and yeah so this was the day he was gone I was like let's go ahead and do this I haven't watched something for myself for a while and it was just it was it was it is a solid science fiction movie gave me a lot of fifth element vibes so if you haven't watched that it's on Netflix go watch it but yeah that was my week 17 I hope you guys all have a wonderful week and are not having any COVID issues See you later.